Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Poetry with Glory. Today I'm going to share some gardening poems because this is the weekend of the year that I tend to spend the most time in the garden and the weather looks perfect to do so again this year. So I thought I'd share some gardening poems. I'm going to start with Seeds and Gardens by R. H. Sweeney. If words are seeds, let flowers grow from your mouth, not weeds. If hearts are gardens, plant those flowers in the chest of the ones who exist around you. And that's Seeds and Gardens by R. H. Sweeney. This next one is by Robert Frost, one of my favorite poets, as I've mentioned before, and it's called A Girl's Garden. A neighbor of mine in the village likes to tell how one spring, when she was a girl on the farm, she did a childlike thing. One day she asked her father to give her a garden plot to plant and tend and reap herself. And he said, why not? In casting about for a corner, he thought of an idle bit of walled off ground where a shop had stood. And he said, just it. And he said that ought to make you an ideal one girl farm and give you a chance to put some strength on your slim Jim arm. It was not enough of a garden, her father said to plow. So she had to work it all by hand, but she don't mind now. She wheeled the dung in a wheelbarrow along a stretch of road, but she always ran away and left her not nice load and hid from anyone passing. And then she begged the seed. She says she thinks she planted one of all things but weed. A hill of each, a hill each of potatoes, radishes, lettuce, peas, tomatoes, beets, beans, pumpkins, corn, and even fruit trees. And yes, she has long mistrusted that a cider apple and bearing there today is hers, or at, le or at least may be. Her crop was a miscellany when all was said and done, a little bit of everything, a great deal of none. Now when she sees in the village how village things go, just when it seems to come in right, she says, I know. It's as when I was a farmer, oh, never by way of advice. And she never sins by telling the tale to the same person twice. And that is a girl's garden. This next one is by Robert Louis Stevenson and it's called The Gardener. The gardener does not like love to talk. He makes me keep to the gravel walk. And when he puts his tools away, he locks the door and takes the key. Away behind the current row where no one else but cook may go, Far in the plots I see him dig, old and serious, brown and big. He digs the flowers, green, red, and blue, nor wishes to be spoken to. He digs the flowers and cuts the hay and never seems to want to play. Silly gardener, summer goes and winter comes with pinching toes. When in the garden, bare and brown, you must lay your barrow down. Well now, and while the summer stays to profit by these garden days, Oh, how much wiser you would be to play at Indian Wars with me. And that is the gardener. Clearly told from the voice of a small child who just wants a, play, a playmate. Okay. The next one is by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, and it's called The Deserted Garden. I mind me in the days departed, how often underneath the sun, with childish, bound, childish bounds I used to run to a garden long deserted. The beds and walks were vanquished, vanished quite, and wheresoe'er had struck the spade, the greenest grasses nature laid to sanctify her right. I called the place my wilderness, for no one entered there but I. The sheep looked in, the grass to a spy, and passed it, ne'er the less. The trees were interwoven wild and spread their boughs enough about to keep keep both sheep and shepherd out, but not a happy child. Adventurous joy it was for me, I crept beneath the boughs 
and found a smirkle, circle smooth of mossy ground beneath a poplar tree. Old garden rose trees hedged it in, bedropped with roses waxen white, well satisfied with dew and light and careless to be seen. Long years ago it might be fall when all the garden flowers were trim, the grave old gardener prided him on these the most of all. Some lady, stately overmuch, here moving with a silken noise, has blushed beneath them at the voice that likened her to such. Or these, to make a diadem, she often may have plucked and twined, half smiling as it came to mind that few would look at them. Oh, little thought that lady proud, a child would watch her fair white rose, when buried lay her whiter brows, and silk was changed for shroud. Nor thought that gardener, full of scorns for men unlearned and simple phrase, a child would bring it all its praise by creeping through the thorns. To me upon my low moss seat, though never dream, though never a dream the roses sent, of science or love's compliment, I ween they smelt as sweet. It did not move my grief to see the trace of human step departed, because the garden was deserted, the blither place, the blither place for me. Friends, blame me not, a narrow ken hath childhood twixt the sun and sword. We draw the moral afterward, we feel the gladness then. And gladdest hours for me did glide, in silence at the rose tree wall. A thrush made gladness musical upon the other side. Nor he nor I did e'er incline to peck or pluck the blossoms white. How should I know but they that they might leave, lead lives as glad as mine? To make my hermit home complete, I brought clear water from the spring, praised in its low murmuring and cresses glossy wet. And so, I thought, my likeness grew without the melancholy tale to gentle hermit of the dale in Angelina too. For oft I read within my nook such minstrel stories till the breeze made sounds poetic in the trees and then I shut the book. If I shut this wherein I write, I hear no more the wind athwart those trees, nor feel that childish heart delighting in delight. My childhood from my life is parted, my footstep from the moss which drew its fairy circle round anew, the garden is deserted. Another thrush may there rehearse the madrigals which sweetest are, sweetest are. No more for me, myself afar do sing a sadder verse. Ah me, ah me, when erst I lay in that child's nest so greenly wrought, I laughed until myself, unto myself and thought, the time will pass away. And still I laughed and did not fear, but that when e'er was passed away, that childish time, some happier play, my womanhood would cheer. I knew the time would pass away, and yet beside the rose tree wall, dear God, how seldom, if at all, did I look up to pray. The time is past, and now that grows the cypress high among the trees, and I behold white sepulchres as well as the white rose. When wiser, meeker thoughts are given, and I have learned to lift my face, reminded how gr earth's greenest place the color draws from heaven. It something saith for earthly pain, but more for heavenly promise free, that I who was would shrink to be that happy child again. And that is The Deserted Garden by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. The next one I'm going to read is called Blight, and it is by Edna St. Vincent Millay. Hard seeds of hate I planted that should by now be grown, rough stalks and from thick stamens a poisonous pollen blown, and odors rank, unbreathable from dark Corolla's throne. At dawn from my damp garden I shook the chilly dew, the thin boughs locked behind me that sprang to let me through. The blossoms slept, I sought a place where nothing lovely grew. And there, when day was breaking, I knelt and looked around. The light was near, the silence was palpitant with sound. I drew my hate from out my breast and thrust it in the ground. O oh, ye so fiercely tended, ye little seeds of hate, I bent above your growing early and noon and late. 
Yet are ye drooped and pitiful, I cannot rear ye straight. The sun seeks out my garden, no nook is left in shade. No mist, nor mold, nor mildew endures on any blade. Sweet rains slant under every bough, ye falter and ye fade. And finally today, a poem by Katherine Rigel called, What I Would Like to Grow in My Garden. Peonies, heavy and pink as 80s bridesmaids' dresses and scented just the same. Sweet pea, because I like clashing smells and the car I drove around in college was named that, a pea green Datsun with a tendency to backfire. Sugar snap peas, which I might as well call memory bites for how they taste like being 14 and still mourning the horse farm I had been uprooted from at 10. Also, sage, mint, and thyme, the clocks of summer, and watermelon and blue lobelia. Lavender for the bees, and because I hate all fake lavender smells. Tomatoes to cut and place on toasted bread for BLTs, with or without the B and the L. I'd like, too, to plant the sweet alyssum that smells like honey and peace and for it to bloom even when it's hot. And also lilies, so I have something left to look at when the rabbits come. They always come. They are always hungry. And I think I am done protecting one sweet thing from another. And that is What I Would Like to Grow in My Garden by Katherine Rigel. I hope that you have enjoyed today's garden edition of Lunchtime Poetry. My name is Lori and I am a librarian at the Manlius Library in Central New York. And you can find me here at the Manlius Library YouTube channel every Friday at noon for more poetry. Have a great day, enjoy the weekend, enjoy your garden if you have one, I know I'm going to, and I'll see you next Friday at noon.